Hey guys, Mr. Riz here to help you out. Um, just to kind of go over the 3.1, 3.3 quiz. Um, so I will I will go through this pretty quickly. I'm not going to write anything because this is actually your quiz. Um, but I just want to make sure you guys are aware of the things that you guys will see on the quiz and what you guys have to do for each type of problem. So the first problem here is you guys are going to describe Rolle's theorem in your own rules. So what that means um, is Rolle's theorem has three things. First thing is that the function needs to be continuous and differentiable. So uh, that's the first thing you can write out in those words, or you can describe like the function has no holes in the graph and no jumps. The second thing is that you have two points, A and B, that are equal value. So you have two points in that function that equal the same number. The third thing is there must be a critical number then in between those two points. So there's a number C in between A and B that is a critical number where its derivative is equal to zero. So there's Rolle's theorem. All right, next, here we go. Um, we got two equations here. You got to find f of two and f of 10. So you'll plug in two for this equation. You'll plug in 10 for this equation. They will equal the same number. The question is, why does Rolle's theorem not apply, even though f of two does equal f of 10? Well, you'd look at this here and say, well, there's a jump in the graph. You just would have to tell me where the jump is. So where is x discontinuous of the function? All right, next problem here is a mean value theorem problem. So you need to do four steps for this one here. This is first, you need to find the average value. So we have two numbers here. We got zero and we got five. So you're going to go ahead, plug in f of five minus f of zero. So you'll plug in five, you'll plug in zero, subtract those numbers. And then you're going to divide it by five minus zero. So you get the average value. You do the f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Then once you do that, so you find the average value. Next thing you do, you take the derivative of the equation. The third thing you do is you set the derivative equal to the average value. And the fourth thing you do is you solve for x. So that number there that you're going to solve for will be the c that is tangent, or its tangent is parallel to the secant line. OK, next we have a story problem involving the mean value theorem. So you have your equation here, and you're going to go through the same four steps. You just know a is 0 and b is 100. So you're going to do f of 100. You'll plug 100 into this equation minus f of 0. You'll plug 0 in and put this over 100 minus 0. So that will get your, your average value. You then take the derivative of this equation, and this is a normal power rule. You'll just have to do 5 halves times 1 tenth and drop it down to 3 halves power. So you take the derivative. You set it equal to the average value, and then you solve for x. Not too bad. A lot of room here, though, because you know, I just want to make sure. All right, next, find and label all extrema, mins, maxes, and discontinuous points of the function. So if you want to make a number line, you can. If not, what you need to do is just basically take the derivative, find your critical numbers of the derivative. So you're going to take the derivative. In this case, you'll have to do low d high, high d low, or low low. And you'll get a fraction. You'll have a number on the top and a number on the bottom. The number on the top, when you set equal to zero, that's going to tell you mins or maxes. The number on the bottom is going to find the discontinuous points. Determine what those numbers are in mins or maxes. You'll have to plug them in, either looking at ranges to see it, are they going up or down, or you'll actually have to evaluate them. So tell me where those are at. And don't just say like x equals 2 is a min. Tell me at the point 2 comma what is a min. Just make sure you guys know how to do that. All right, problem six is a number line problem. So you're going to make your number line. You're going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So this one shouldn't be too bad here. It will probably be some kind of quadratic equation because the x cubed goes down to 3x squared. And you'll have to factor it to solve for those two variables. Then you're going to tell me, OK, what's going on between those? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going back up or vice versa? All righty, here we go. Next one, given the derivative, so, or no, this is sketch the derivative given f of x. So these are all you want to go through, sketch the derivative. So you can see this graph is going down, then up. So the line should be below, then above. Kind of go through here. These problems here, you're going to sketch the original function given the derivative. So if this is the derivative, this is all above and then switching to below. So that means the graph needs to be going up and then switch to going down right at this spot here. Check the review worksheet out if you need more help with that. 
All right, next problem. You are going to use a graphing calculator for this one. You could have used it for the other ones, but you're going to go through and almost basically make your number line again, but you're going to go through, find all your mins, your maxes, and your discontinuous points and endpoints. So discontinuous points or endpoints uh, when you were dealing with the square root is when the square root becomes negative, when the square root is less than zero. So you might go through and take the derivative um, and you can get some, but if you have any numbers that are less than in this case, let's see, or actually any numbers greater than one half, right? Yeah, because if you have one half, that would make it zero. Any number bigger than one half, that's negative and it's not real. And then the same thing here, you got your sine and cosine here. Just to help you out, if you have trouble typing in sine squared, so you can use Desmos in here, but you'll make your number line and you'll pick your points from zero to pi and find out your mins and maxes in between there and whether that graph is going up or down. So it's positive, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay, hopefully that helps get you guys some clues about this test that's coming up and uh, you guys should be all right. You guys have a great day. Good luck on the test and I'll see you next.